At the same time, Vandiyadeva was wandering in the Nandavan of the mansion with great mental exhaustion. In that Nandavanam mansion, the outer wall was situated along the side of the wall. The night-blooming flowers were opening their petals just then. The breeze of the month of Apasi brought the fragrance of flowers such as Painar, Parijatham, Jasmine, and Mulberry to his side. A.G.A. Shouldn't we be in the old palace Nandavana at this time? Shouldn't the symbols of Kundave Devi suddenly sound like that? That's what his mind thought. Are we here and trapped in the Kadampur palace? Do we wake up trapped by a maniacal prince? He thought that. When Aditya Kari Kalar fell on him that evening in a fit of rage, don't wake up in my face ever again. At that time, Aditya Kari Kalar's enthusiasm had reached its peak. Excitement and exhaustion, anger and exhilaration, friendship and cruel enmity alternately gripped him and swayed him. He was also shaking the people around him like this. The people around were worried as to what his course would be and what he would do in the next moment. The tidings that had been pouring in since the sun had risen that day were helping to increase his enthusiasm. Sambhavarayar was the first to come to him and told him the news that Thirukovalar Malayaman force was gathering. He expressed his objection and condemnation about it. Malayaman is an old man of charity. More than eighty years old. What fear do you have of his coming? said the prince. Sir! We are the descendants of Valval Ori, the head of Kolimela. We are ignorant of the meaning of fear. I hesitate to visit you here. If only you would give me permission. You are ready to set out at once to do battle with the old man. That's all. Sambawariyar. It was I who sent word to set out with my patent army. For what, prince? I'm stuck here alone with you aren't I? If something happens to me while I'm here. Come again. If they had even an iota of doubt in their minds, this very moment. You're telling me to get out of here. Sir. This is their kingdom. This is their palace. The tiger flag is flying on top of it. Who am I to ask them to leave here? If you give me permission, I and my family will leave here. You may be forced to stay here by summoning Malajadeyar Malayamana. Oko. Born in Valval Ori's dynasty, are you telling me that you are fearless and I, born in the clan of Vijayalaya Chola, am fearful? The prince's diamond chest and bravery are known to the world. In the twelfth Braya, you entered the battlefield of Severb and defeated the enemies and earned the name of Viridi Viran. In the eighteenth Braya, you chased Veera Pandayan who came to the battle again and found him in his hiding place and brought him back by cutting off his head. On hearing this, Aditha Kari Kalan said, I know, sir. I know. I know that you all speak of me as the tiger who chased the fugitive and brought back the dead Veera Pandian's head, I also know that the ghost of Pavur Mahini has started such rumours. After saying that, he laughed in a menacing tone. Why did Sambhavarayar give speech to this mad prince? Come again. Whatever I say goes wrong. Do whatever you want. I'm going. It is all right to go, but give up the thought of leaving this castle. I will not leave this place until I know the truth about the conspiracy that took place in this palace four months ago, and neither will you. Aditha Kari Kalar said. Sambhavarayar's lips twitched. The body trembled. Tears welled up in his eyes. Parthipendran who was next to him saw this situation. Come again. Chola clan is famous for justice as well as valor. They did not do justice to this great man. You are hurting his heart with your words. You have already agreed to make peace with Sambhavarayar about the meeting of the minor kings here. Since they are saying that they do not want a kingdom and are refusing to go to Tanjavur, the princes considered the good of the Chola kingdom and thought about who would be the next title. If they were willing to bear the weight of the kingdom, why should they think otherwise? When there was added a Karikala, who spread the fame of valor all over the world, would they even dream of Madhurand Hakadeva, who had never seen the battlefield? Aditha Karikalar interrupted, Yes, yes. It is impossible for another one to climb the Chola lion while I am alive. That is why they are trying to finish me off. After saying that, 
he laughed out loud again ha ha ha. Parthipendra. Did you think that I didn't know that you also joined them? Did you think that I didn't know that when you and Gandamaran went hunting that day, I was looking for a work mark? If only this Vandiyadeva, my true friend, had not come here as an ungodly person, wouldn't you have sent me to the world of Yama by now? He said that. Parthipendra looked at Vandiyadeva as if he was going to kill him with his eyes and said, Sir! This Badakan has spoiled their minds by saying something. If he proves to them that I have intended to betray him from my heart, this very moment. Father! How can anyone prove the treachery that you have in mind? You took such pains to bring me here by listening to the speech in answer to my question? Can you deny that this is not the case? I do not deny it, Prince. Nor need I deny it. I know for sure that the Queen of Palvur has interfered in this matter with the best of intentions. Her intention is to present herself here and marry Kanamar's sister, and see to it that there is no disturbance in the Chola country. Rather than wearing the bell crown of the Chola clan on their sires, there is nothing else that can make us all happy. I will bear it if anyone criticizes me. If you say something bad about the Queen of Palavur, I will make him a sword immediately. Said Parthipendra looking at Vandiyadeva and at the same time took out his sword from its sheath. Ah, my valiant friend! Put the sword in its scabbard. I will tell you when the time is right. Then we can take it out. Vandiyathevan has not complained about the Queen of Palvur. He is just as mesmerized as you. In fact, he swears that the Queen of Palvur is my half-sister. D also came. He accuses you of something else. He says that you brought my brother from the country of Ela in your ship and threw him into the sea on the way and drowned him? What is your answer to that? Aditha Karikalar said. At that point, I'll answer that. Kanamaran came there saying that. Come again. I have brought you very happy news. The little prince did not drown in the sea. Pani's savior had been hiding all these days in Nagipatanam Sudamani Viharam. He happened to emerge when the storm raged and the sea entered the city of Nagipatanam. He is now heading towards Tanjavur surrounded by locks of people. Gandamaran said with glee. Expecting Karikalar to be cheered by this news, he was sorely disappointed. Karikalar's hostility now turned in a different direction. What? What? Is Aromazai going towards Tanjavur? Is he going to be surrounded by locks of people? Why? Valavari? What did you say? What is happening now? Didn't you say that Aromazai will stay in Nagipadinam until he gets to know my opinion? Why is he going to Tanjavur now? Vandiyathevan interrupted and said sir. That is what the younger bratty said for sure. I don't know what happened after that. Go if I want. Aha. Uh -huh. You say I will go too? Good, good. You all have become my enemies. I see all your schemes. I know why Aromazai is going to Tanjavur. It is the scheme of that great villain of Kajumbalur. He wants to tie his younger daughter around my brother's neck and put them on the Chola Singadanam. Desire. I heard that Kajumbalar Velan is also coming towards Tanjavur with a southerly force. My sister Ilay Aprati is also involved in this maneuver. Yes, you too. Vandiyathevan said, Prince. Forgive me. Neither Pani Selvar nor Ilay Aprati have any such thoughts. This is the truth. If I want, I will go and find out the truth. He said. Yes. You say you will go and participate in their plot. Can't Hamara. Catch him immediately and put him in the mine prison if there is any mine in this palace. Then Gondhamaran approached Vandiyathevan with great joy. Immediately Kari Kalar changed his command and said, No. No. The Cholas are unrighteous. They will not punish unless the crime is proven. Valavara. Do not wake up in my face for the rest of the day. That will be your punishment. I will tell you tomorrow whether I will send you to Tanjore or jail. Go. Go. Now go. Don't stay here for a moment. Go away. 
Vandiyadeva then saw Karakalar's face. His sharp eye signalled it's all a game. It seemed to indicate that. However, Vandiyathevan, deciding in a moment that it was better not to be with the prince who had his mind, said, Sir, there will is my blessing. After her saying that he left. Later that afternoon, Vallavara and Vandiyathevan came to know that on the prince's orders, Sambuvarayar and Parthapendran had gone to meet Tirakovalarg Kaisar and bring him back. He also came to know that Prince and Kanamaran had been talking privately for a long time. All these incidents made Vandiyathevan very depressed. What order will the Prince give him the next morning? Do you want to go to Tanjavur? Will you tell me to go to Padayara on the way? How nice would that be? He did not like this Kadampur mansion life at all. Nobody is excited here. Everyone here always seems to have given something away. When the sun goes down, this house does not look like a house where people live. It appears as a dilapidated mansion inhabited by demons. When and how are we going to leave from here? When Vandiyathevan thought like this, a woman's voice said, Oh devil! The scream fell on his ears. 